Hi, this is Chuck Benedict, mentor for Team 997 Spartan Robotics in Corvallis, Oregon for Corvallis High School. This is the third video in a series to talk through an application that I've produced to help make it easier to write vision processing for FRC teams. Uh, in the last video, I talked about the system architecture, which I have up here again, that walked through the four different pieces to the project. I'll kind of briefly talk about them, but in this video, what I ultimately wanted to show was downloading the project, building it, and then running it. But in quick review, the vision processing application uh, that I'm going to show you consists of four pieces. Uh, streaming off of a USB camera that's plugged into a Windows workstation, which has typically been a challenge because WPI lib doesn't support that natively. Converting that into an HTTP MJPEG stream, which is what most IP cameras published. So in effect, that allows you to turn any USB camera into a uh, HTTP webcam. The main image processing application, which does the bulk of the work, and then that image processing application is going to write to network tables, which is this one. And uh, this is what allows you to decouple your image processing from the robot doing real work. Uh, and in this case, this network table simulator sort of simulates a RoboRio, but it does it uh, on your local Windows workstation. In total, all of these all of these four pieces can run locally on your Windows workstation, and you don't have to have a RoboRio, which is the point of the exercise. So, first things first. Uh, I have a uh, GitHub site called Team Nine Nine Seven Coders, and I have a project called BB Twenty Eighteen Ball Finding Vision. You'll find the URL to this um, in the comments section on the video. But the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to clone and download this project onto your local uh, workstation, which you can do so here. And, or um, feel free to fork this project and make mods on your own. And if you want to make pull requests, I'll be happy to consider them and merge them. Next thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have all of the development system requirements. You should have already installed uh, Visual Studio Code, which was on my prior video. There's a screen step site that I referenced from first that walks you through um, those steps. And if you haven't, I'll also put the link to this that link on the comments to this video, but be sure you do that. You'll want to install Git, which is uh, source code control. You'll want to install Python 3. Some of the sub projects that this main project uses rely on Python. You'll want to install Java. Uh, you probably already have that installed as a, a process of installing VS Code, but in case not, be sure to do that. GStreamer, you most likely will not have installed. And again, that is the magic that allows us to get the um, images off of a USB camera from, from Windows. And in fact, GStreamer is cross-platform. There are versions of it for Windows and Raspberry Pi and other um, hardware platforms as well, which is what makes it really handy. <clears throat> Finally, you will want optionally to install a program called Bonjour, and this is what allows you to associate on a local area network devices using the host name of the device to the DHCP assigned IP address of the device. And this is handy because when we go to deploy to the device, we don't want to have to know the IP address all the time. We prefer to just reference it by a known name. And if you install Bonjour, um, that is what allows you to do that. Now, if you have uh, Network Instruments LabVIEW application installed, LabVIEW comes with an equivalent piece of software, so you wouldn't need this in this case. My workstation, however, doesn't have LabVIEW installed, so I have Bonjour. After you've done all that, and you've downloaded um, the project from GitHub, you'll want to open the works, you want to open uh, VS Code, and then open the works workspace of the project. A lot of times you'll just open up the folder in VS Code and start working. In my case, I have created a workspace which allows me to um, associate environment variables to various sub-projects because some of the sub-projects depend on them. 
And through a workspace, that is a way in VS Code that I can do that behind the scenes without you having to go in and set up environment variables ahead of time, which is kind of annoying. So simply open up the workspace and you'll be, you'll be set. And in this case, I have the workspace open. Uh, next, go to a terminal and go to the root directory of the project and type in uh, Gradle W, which is a wrapper for Gradle. Uh, Gradle is a build system for Java. Uh, there's different versions of Gradle. And what you normally do for a project is that you build a wrapper for the particular version of Gradle that your project uses, as I have done in this case. And then you'll type in the task build. And that will build all of the sub projects that you see here. And it will create a bin directory in the main folder of the project where all of the um, binaries are located that will allow you to run the project. Um, in my case, this took, this didn't take much time. Note that when you do this for the first time, it may take three minutes to complete the build because uh, I'm using Python and in particular, I'm using a, what's called a virtual environment for Python, which makes it so that you don't have to have any particular version of Python installed. I, there are some versions that my sub projects require but you don't have to worry about that because I have a virtual environment that's created behind the scenes for you. Once that is done, you'll go to the bin directory. And if we look in here, we'll see some files, uh, binaries that were created. Uh, if you remember from the architecture diagram, there were four different applications that this project creates. And instead of having to start those up manually, um, the build has created a bat file I'm on Windows in this case, has created a bat file. And when you run that bat file, it basically runs all of those four applications for you automatically. Uh, one thing that I didn't mention, I'm recording uh, this video on the camera that I'm looking at you at, but I have also plugged into my workstation this uh, Microsoft LifeCam uh, HD 5000, I think it is. This This camera here, is what um, first recommends that you use for uh, image processing through WPI Lib. I think there are some others that are supported. My guess is, is that most cameras are supported anyway. Um, in my case, I'm using um, MJPEG streams, and this camera natively supports MJPEG streams. That's an older standard. Most cameras support that standard, so if it does, you're in good shape. So I'm going to run the project now since my build is, has been completed successfully by running the startup at file. And um, because I have two cameras plugged into my workstation, Windows enumerates the cameras by number, starting with the number zero. And I happen to know in this case that it, for whatever reason, enumerates this life cam first so this is this will be camera zero the camera that I'm, that I'm recording this on is camera one and I've also noticed that it seemingly randomly windows will switch it between one and zero I don't know why so you'll have to determine if you have multiple cameras installed which device your the camera is that you want to run for maybe you've only got one installed in which case that will be camera zero so in my case I'm going to pick zero and you'll notice that there will be four uh, console applications started as a part of running this. So the run camera vision .bat file, the um, console application that started, if you see timed out getting frame once or twice, but then nothing, um, that tells you that the project is running okay. And further than that, further, there is an NT server application. That's the one that's mimicking network tables. And when a ball is recognized in this example, you'll see um, a value change, which indicates that it's found a ball. So let's go to a web browser and let's look at a couple of things. So the first thing to note is that you can obtain the raw image off of this camera um, by going to localhost uh, 1337 
slash mjpeg underscore stream. And so um, as you can see, I have a uh, racquetball right there and you can see that the image, uh, you know, the raw, we can get the raw image off the camera. Okay, that's nice. Next, the image processing application itself publishes an endpoint with the raw image. So this image that you're seeing here is basically the same image that you saw uh, on the other tab. The difference is, is that the other tab is uh, as the image is published from our MJPEG streaming IP camera server, if you will, this image right here is coming, is, is reading it from the, um, the HTTP server and is basically writing it back out on another port. And you, you could push this directly to the um, driver station if you wanted to as the raw image. Um, but it's just nice to know that, it, that in, in our example, we have the ability to see the raw image. Okay, finally, the image processed image is available on port 1186. And um, as you can see, when I hold the camera up here uh, and autofocus is an issue here, which is why this looks annoying. And some cameras have autofocus problems. Um, I haven't really addressed it in the example so far and I intend to, um, but it does a decent enough job. What you can see is that the, there's a uh, yellow circle around the ball. And that is what the image processing example is doing. It identifies the ball as a blue ball. It counts the number of blue balls that it sees in the image and it draws a circle around it so that you can see that it actually figured it out. Uh, and you know, as I sort of move the, the camera over, you can see there's only a half a ball and it, you know, it detects the fact that it, it can't see a full round ball. And as I move it over, you can see now that it does identify it. Further, if I switch over to my image processing console app, you can see that the value is, the current value is true. If I move the camera off the ball, you can see that the value is false. So this is the equivalent of the RoboRio in network tables, um, seeing the ball through the image processed image. So in a nutshell to review, what, what I've demonstrated is getting the project off of GitHub, uh, building it in Visual Studio Code, uh, making sure that you have all of the um, requirements installed, and then running it and showing the various endpoints that are published through a web browser. In the next videos, uh, I'll take some more uh, in-depth um, look, I'll take a more in-depth look at the projects, at the code of the projects themselves, so that you can see a little bit more about how it's constructed and some of the techniques that I used. Until then, good luck with vision processing and uh, good luck with the upcoming year. Thanks.